Hey Gunnar, I, I wanted to ask about preparing to play in front of a, you know, in a stadium with lots of fans after a season where you didn't have very many opportunities to have that. Do you prepare differently? How do you prepare to deal with that adrenaline that comes with that? Um, you know, hopefully what the plan is having that many people there. Yeah, I mean, you really can't prepare for the adrenaline rush. Um, you know, in practice, you can't really simulate the crowd. Um, we do try to pump in music. We try to, you know, make it as loud as we can at practice. So, you know, it might be hard to hear the calls or the or the signals or something. But really, it's hard to simulate that that game experience. And, you know, so we just rely on veterans past experience, um, you know, before the COVID year, just to kind of um, talk through it and just kind of tell everybody how it is. But really, there's nothing like simulating the game experience. How do you personally deal with it? Because you've been there. You've, you've, you've seen both sides of that. So how do you do it? Um, for me, it's it's more of trying to block that stuff out. I know a lot of people kind of um, use that to fuel them. They, they like to, to take the crowd and use that energy to fuel them. For me, I'm kind of the opposite. I kind of like to play, um, you know, even and cool. So I, I kind of just block it out and just pretend that no one's there. You know, the 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 sounds that we're hearing, it's just the speakers. And so that's 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 my way of doing it. Uh, Mitch, go ahead. Gunnar, what took place in, in camp that maybe has you uh, confident or excited about the offense you guys are going to put on display on Saturday night? Um, you know, I think uh, the the camp was pretty up and down throughout the whole entire whole entire camp. Um, but what really has me confident is the way that we came together towards the end, you know. Um, there was a lot of competing back and forth for the first couple of weeks. You know, we didn't know who the quarterback was going to be yet. So there's a lot of competitions, a lot of, I think, added pressure. Um, but, you know, starting last week, I think the offense kind of felt, found its groove a little bit. And just we've just been getting better and better every single day. And so I think that's what gives me a lot of confidence. What are, um, looking at uh, Arizona, what are maybe some, some traits you've gathered about Arizona's secondary that, that stand out maybe in your study of the Wildcats? You know, Arizona, they have pretty much a whole new defense. They have a new defensive coordinator, lots of new transfers coming in. Um, but just standing out from, from what I've seen is they're athletic. Um, you know, they can, they can fly all over the field. They've got some, some, some burners. They've got some really athletic guys. So I think that's the thing that stands out to me the most. Thanks. Okay, Jake, go ahead. Yeah, Gunnar, you're a kid from Arizona. I know you're from the Valley and not from Tucson, but what does it mean for you to go against the team from your home state? Um, it's huge for me. You know, I have a lot of a lot of buddies that I played seven on seven with. A lot of buddies that I played high school with that, that are at Arizona. So, you know, it's just bragging rights. Um, you know, I have some family members that are big Wildcat fans. Um, I went to games growing up um, at at U of A, and so it's it's just pretty much bragging rights for me. You know, I, I want to be able to go talk trash to my family members that are fans, or uh, you know, to my old high school teammates. Okay, Shep, and then Jay. Gunnar, I'm curious your, your thoughts on Jaron and how the offense works with him at quarterback. G give us kind of an idea of what you see from Jaron and, and how this offense works with him at quarterback. I think it's really methodical. Um, you know, Jaron, he makes a good decision. He's super consistent, so you know, you know what to expect from him every single time. And I think that consistency – um, really helps people play into themselves. You know, they're not worried about, um, you know, some, something crazy happening. So I think people are comfortable. And when people play comfortable, you play more loose and you play faster. How much has it helped, not just you, but everybody on the offense, that, that this is, that, you know, Coach Roderick has found an offense that he likes. And so you guys can build off of the success from last season moving into this year. Yeah, it's, it's huge. You know, you know what to expect. Um, and just kind of we had um, the whole entire offseason to prepare with Coach Roderick. Um, you know exactly where to be at exactly the right time. And, you know, Coach Roderick, he's, he's, a, he's a genius offensive minded. So you, you know you can trust him. You know, you're going to run a route or you're going to block um, knowing that what you're doing is going to help the play. And I think that really helps it. Thanks, Gunnar. Hey, Gunnar, I just wondered if you had an NIL deal with uh, Bass Pro Shops. No, nah, man, I wish I did. That'd be, that'd be nice. We'll, we'll have to work towards one in the future. Are you into fishing and hunting and all that stuff? Uh, I am. My family's big into uh, all the outdoor stuff. My dad's a huge fisherman, so we, we love doing that. A little more seriously, how, how's Baylor 
kind of handling the, the news, which obviously wasn't what he was hoping to hear. Yeah, you know, obviously he took it hard. He, he wanted to be that starter, but, you know, Baylor is a really mature guy and he's he's really supportive of Jaron. So he's he's kind of, you know, still uh, still being supportive, still being a team leader and, you know, keep working because, you know, you never know if his time will come or not. All right, Jared, and then Jake, last question. Gunnar, I wanted to go to something you said, and I don't know how close you are to anybody that's at Arizona, but obviously last year was was really crazy for them. You guys played, what, three times as many games as, as those guys did. I just wondered how different it is this year if you have connections there or if you have any idea to, to be coming off of a year where you played a lot more games than, than your opponent did. Yeah, you know, like I mentioned, they have a completely new coaching staff. They have so many transfers. I think they got like something like six transfers just in the secondary. Um, so they, there's a lot of buzz around that program right now. You know, they they believe that they're on on the rise, and they believe that you know they're going to be a good team this year. And so I think um, it doesn't really matter what they did last year. I think they're just looking forward. Gunnar, uh, you last year, I think, had the most near touchdowns, as I guess is what I'll call them, uh, in terms of playing in games. Is that just a luck thing, in your opinion? Is that something you can you can change to make sure you get into the end zone? Um, I think it is a luck thing, but I think you create your own luck. And so that's one thing that I've been working on this season, is, you know, maybe if I was, you know, half a tenth of a second faster, I, I would have been there if I was – you know, just a, a fraction uh, stronger, you know, I would have been able to get that one yard. So that's what I'm working for. All right. Thanks, Gunnar. Thank you.